In honor of Halloween, I thought instead of the normal episode, what I would do is recite the entirety of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. But Rebecca didn't think this would be a good idea. So we negotiated. She said I could record it, and then she would just stop it when she thought people might get bored. So, once upon a midnight dreary. Welcome to Ask the Mead Maker, where I, Ricky the Mead Maker, answer your questions about mead making, mead drinking, mead brewing, and really, any question you're willing to send to me. I know it's Halloween, and the staff wanted me to dress up for Ask the Mead Maker, but I told them no. Our first question this week comes from Chris H., who wants to know the difference between yeast nutrient and yeast energizer. The problem is, yeast energizer is technically a type of yeast nutrient. The terms are used to indicate when you should put it into your fermentation. Yeast nutrient goes in at the beginning, and yeast energizer goes in when there's a stuck fermentation. The compositions of both of them are a little different. One is more mineral heavy, the other one has some amino acids, I believe. You can look them up online. The second part of his question is, can you use too much? And the answer is absolutely. If you overdo it on yeast energizer or yeast nutrient, your meat will come out tasting bready. Last week, I wrote an article about a top secret project I've been working on. It's called The Feast. The very first one is tomorrow, November 1st, 2015. Many more details will be forthcoming, but I will tell you this. It is big. It is exciting. And it means big changes here in our tasting room. Our next question comes from Nate Matz, who wants to know where I draw my inspiration from when I'm coming up with mead recipes. And the answer is... Eric. He's my muse. No, I'm just kidding. I eat and drink a lot. And everything I eat and everything I drink is potential inspiration for something I brew. Our next question comes from Azazel, who wants to know my thoughts on glass bottles versus aluminum cans versus aluminum bottles. And my thoughts are pretty simple. Glass bottles are a pain. They are heavy. They are breakable. They are an inefficient use of space. Cans can be a pain in their own way because they're hard to order, they're hard to store, but once you have them, they are a super efficient packaging type and they are infinitely recyclable. Aluminum bottles manage to fuse the worst of both worlds without the breakability of glass. They are silly and I think they are merely a marketing scam. Our last question this week comes from Vorshaska, who's written to us in the past. Her question is a beautiful statement. It begins, I love your show. Ricky's hair is beautiful. May I comb it? The answer is, I think you live in Poland. But in general, yes, come visit me anytime. That's the end of our show. I just need to send it over to Ricky with our word of the week. Ricky? Thank you, Ricky. This week's word of the week seems particularly apropos considering our cold open. Our word is nepenthe. A nepenthe is historically an antidepressant, literally from the Greek. It means to take away sorrows, and many people believe that mead, a gift of the gods, was a particularly effective nepenthe. Alcohol is a depressant, but who am I to argue with the wisdom of the ancients? Nepenthe is our word of the week and the end of our show. Keep sending your questions and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Cheers.